So next, we will go into the green tie as we have Lucas Troller. So Lucas Troller is actually a Team America, Team USA um, player that ended up bringing the green tide here. One of his game was on War Games Live, so you can actually go and see it, and then we'll talk about that and we actually see it. I won't spill the whole thing and everything because it, it should be it's fun to watch, but I'll let you know the general gist of it. Then we have um, Lucas Troller did bring a bit different of a green tide list which could get our blood flow going and juices flowing which i think this will be a fun list to go into our uh shout out to the bully boys list we're going to go into after this so lucas troller of course green america Ameri team america didn't do as good as they had hoped this year which was interesting to kind of look at but lucas troller still had some great games here with uh which people would consider a very very weak version of orcs in this detachment and heavily nerfed detachment so let's take a look at lucas troller's green tide list you know from what i remember i believe it was lucas troller that brought the archetype of truck spam where he was the first person i think i believe i might be wrong this is back when my channel first started but i believe you brought the archetype of truck spam where it was six trucks and then three of the what are now legend big tracks um so he's been on team america he's a reliably good orc player therefore you know he's coming up with his new ideas so let's take you know this with uh some some thought here it, it was different though he has three units of two units of beast boss and i'll just tell you right now he doesn't have any beast snag boys then three units of pain boys followed by three war bosses one weird boy as the warlord with the enhancement uh brutal but cunning for that secret mission play then he has three uh 20 man units of boys sorry on the little thing here i wrote 20 it's actually just a 10 man unit as his fourth unit there for 85 points you can see i wrote there um so he had only three 20 man units of boys and then he had a single 10 man unit of boys for his four battle line units he had two trucks two 10 man units of flash kits followed by a five man unit of flash kits followed by a gretchen and a storm boys unit now what i want to talk about here for anybody that's just like what the heck is happening with this list don't worry i'm on the same page with you we'll talk through it i'll give you some of my thoughts here right um one there's been a lot of talk of what about a single beast boss by himself because he still gets the dev wound if you're not playing something like uh war horde where you're re-rolling for the hits and such then you're not really fishing for anything as well that means you're really capped that he's getting his mathematically average output for those dev wounds so you're not really hoping the spike in one shot of enemy vehicle you're really hoping to kind of finish something off so independently for 80 points do you think his devil and potential is where you want it to be in hoping for his max potential spike and just a straight data sheet because there's no other bus he's getting from this detachment uh for 80 points you know it is interesting boys i haven't seen anybody else run it we've always been talking about it in the discord uh, and other people about it like man what about just a straight beast boss you know i haven't run it he's quite susceptible to overwatch and he's going to be soft on a clap back if somebody was to uh you know fight counter you know fight back and interrupt but all in all he made it work with the two units of beast boss with no snaggins uh, of course you mandatory have to have pain boys in this so i think the fact that he bought three bosses three war bosses three pain boys and uh, just the straight up 60 boys is what you need to do because all the other ones are just soft targets for call the horde this unit is extremely durable extremely unreliable to kill and gets great value out of the strats it's pretty much the entire backbone of the detachments so those characters plus these dudes are just straight up the whole list the 10 unit of boys is just there to do actions for sticky or or just chill uh the two trucks are there for the flash kits and of course that's where the beast boss can actually get out so that's the weird case where maybe the beast boss runs up you know uh the flash gets shoot it do lethal and then the beast boss hopefully runs up and finish it off in a weird case for like a low wound uh durable vehicle or monster then he has a five-man unit of flash kits as their great value now here's the thing to keep in mind boys that i was going to talk about for point value right as green tide was hit so hard that it lost a lot of its defensive buffs uh you know it lost the purpose of you bringing the characters and the and the boys for that case what are you going to do per point as the backbone of this detachment and the whole point of this detachment is to have a uh, army of attrition rate hard to kill uh be very very low you know scoring uh you know value per unit in a sense uh for the amount of wounds you're getting therefore flash gets sit right at that threshold now a flash kit is a 16 point unit that means per wound you're paying eight point a orc boy is 8.5 point per him right so data sheet per data sheet you're getting what is considered a knob data sheet that's a four up armor save a base strength five save then you're getting a big fat gun and you're paying half a point less 
per wound than you would pay for a boy. And now, of course, you're not getting the five up info from this detachment, but you're not paying for the characters. And you're also actually having some shooting potential. So that's where the flash gets actually makes sense for a green tide style list where per point per wound it actually goes great and makes straight up mathematically sense to go here uh and actually having four of armor saves does make a difference for that defensive buff so it's kind of funny um with that being said uh let's take a look at his path to victory today's sponsor baron of dice so baron of dice has great dice they have actually enabled us to give these dice out for our paint competitions uh so i greatly advise that you go out there we have a link in the description for five percent discount that's of course because nobody likes taxes shout out to the baron of dice because they are actually customizing orc dice just for us that you guys will be able to get a hold of and they look exceptional so shout out to baron of dice really appreciate you guys and i really do suggest you get them i love the actual texture these dice have beautiful 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 as we'll go through it, it you know it is we can only say so much as it's for teams so we don't know what people were thinking when they put them into the matchup what his actual you know attempt you know what he was actually trying to do sometimes people know they're going to lose the game and they're just going to try to get as many points as possible and they have like i just need to get nine points here or i need to get six points here whatever it is we don't know that so we're just going to look at what it looked like what killed him go through it real quick so his first matchup was against team slovakia which was craft world eldar now we have Artog, Way Leaper, Death Jester, Farseer. One unit of Guardians, Rangers, Shadow Spectre, Swooping Hawks, a trope, another trope of Harley Quinns. Two units of Warp Spiders, Sky Weavers, three units of Squad Weavers, one Wind Rider, a Night Spinner. Okay, so Night Spinner bringing, making a shout out for a comeback for a Night Spinner, uh, movement deduction and such. Uh, two War Walkers, and then a straight up Wave Serpent. Now, one thing that, you know, we'll talk about, shout out, give a sneak peek on the War Games live stream is that. People think because Eldar have a lot of volume and, and just stuff um, that they do fine into this kind of matchup. I would say because they're kind of more MSU and of course there's different. They're going to see as we go through this, there's different obviously list and and backbones of Eldar is that Eldar don't really like to face a horde as they as if Eldar all shoot into this unit and it kind of blood surges somewhere and it, because an activation hides a little more and they pull guys and then they rebuild and they get a little closer and they regen dudes and then they go and they the, the Eldar is like, well, now Next turn, I'm going to shoot you again, and I'm going to charge you. While well, the orc player is like, "Well, I'm just going to interrupt." So if you charge me multiple units, I'm just going to pick all those little crappy Eldar units up, even if I only have ten orc boys and a war boss left in that unit and the pain boss. Um, so it's really weird, and that's where the flash gets get kind of good Overwatch value here. So in this matchup, Lucas did end up putting uh, a twenty point win up right there. So that's almost like an ideal matchup. Now in his second matchup, he ended up from here on. Lucas had hard, 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 hardy game. So he had a tie here. Let's take a look at his second game, and I'll take a shout out in chat after. After this so say what you guys gotta say here after this after uh we go through this a bit so his second one was against romania with the blood angels these are with the sons of sanguinius with the red thirst so we have a chaplain with jump pack commander dante lamartis sanguinary jump pack and the sanguinor uh the reason i'm not really spending too much time going to data sheets is everybody knows what they're doing right now and their book's been announced so it might change now we have two assault intercessors with jump pack one sorry three of course three excuse me loads three units of assault gender uh gem pack intercessors i love that they can get to strength six not for us that sucks against us but you would think plus two strength feels pretty freaking great on jet pack units right um for volume and then you're putting mortal wounds with the shoulder bashes then we have two units of death company with jump pack followed by a brick of sanguinary guards a lot of time people don't bring these sanguinary guard very expensive uh they do get to good threshold as well with their strength encounters but for the most part very very um elite units and that's where you really really just uh would have a hard time kind of killing these guys with a two-up armor save for the most part hoping that your knobs and war muscles are able to kill this guy then you have a vanguard veteran squad with a jump pack followed by a caladius assassin so as you orc players would definitely know here you can see how this could be a detrimental matchup of course for the most part i don't recommend overwatching with the 10 mana flashes so you don't get overwatch you don't get rerolls anymore but in this sort of matchup this is why I bring in 10 man units of flash hits for your, your green tide units because you need something to overwatch if somebody's trying to counter charge your boys uh, and try to take them in open field. Of course, your boys might actually be able to withstand this kind of assault. Just understand that whatever's left over, you got to make sure all your power calls are somewhere so you can do a effective power clap back when you interrupt. Um, this is a difficult matchup. Use an orc player 
they're very skill heavy as they're faster than you uh, they can very much get the initiative on you and they actually have valuable units to trade so shout out to lucas for pulling this off as even a 10 10 that very much in my opinion was possibly his intention here as blood angels can be a lot of different armies so it very much might have been hey try to get a win or a, a tie here so shout out to him for getting that then we have his third matchup he went at the thousand suns like i said before and we've seen earlier winnable matchup for orcs but when you're talking about something like the green tide guess who has the volume to kill a green tide well thousand suns well what's perfect into killing thousand suns strength six minus one two damage well i guess not perfect because you want more ap but the profile is at that threshold where you just start picking up thousand sun rubric marines so it's really nice to have a shoot back that means this ends up becoming more of an interesting game than if these were simply some boys with some more melee dudes behind them so we have armin with discons each exalted sorcerers exalted sorcerers infernal master infernal master infernal master and then magnus so of course character heavy we have one two three units of rubrics followed by two mutilex vortex beast two units of cultist followed by three units of zangord and lighten just looking at this you're uh, actually a bit happier to have flash kits as we spoke about flash kits picking up cultists very effectively picking up zangors picking up rubric marines um and then there's just the zangors that are sitting back there going well i have good ability to kill you but if the please 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 don't tag me please don't tag me which is what you're trying to do with the green tide as a whole um i would say of course always consider strategic reserving one of these units Units, whether it be your 20 man unit of boys in this sort of matchup where you can come off the table edge and hope to take less damage or your flash so you get the angle of fire so you can kill people that are trying to stand on objectives uh this sort of matchup is where you do consider a strategic reserves more or less uh to try to keep yourself safe from their movement shenanigans with your orc army uh he did end up winning this one <laughs> impressive impressive right uh 11 11 point win now after this he starts taking uh you know his, he starts taking his knocks so his fourth matchup he goes into what i would consider the hardest matchup even when green tide was doing great uh was the space wolf stormlands maybe not the hardest hardest you know statistically speaking but it was definitely one of the much harder matchups as they actually have all the tools to really kill you uh and even here as we've seen with lucas as this was his lowest scoring game he ended up taking his hits here so we have the lieutenant with combi weapon so he gets to pretty much just choose an objective and give you reroll ones for the whole army we have lord um oh sorry we have logan grimnar i have no idea why i called him lord so he's their version of like a named character their mini one of gas i guess i don't know so they get the high king of fenris so he gets their own wall that way if you ever see another orc uh sorry another orc you really see another space wolf player and he brings logan just kind of wall when he does his little weird wall too right so what happens is during the charge phase he can reroll charges and he can reroll the hit roll for that so we get our wall and we, they get this right so keep that in mind uh he can be on a sled but in this case he's just on foot he's terminator he punches a little bit there you go that's his data sheet um then we have a wolf guard battle leader on thunder wolf now this is actually important which i did pull this up as free he gets as well because we got we got a learns here so we do have lethals on the, the wolf guard battle leader very important this guy in this case has hunter's instinct and for the most part you might see multiple um lists i'm sorry multiple wolf guard battle leaders anywhere because you need lethals for the mounts and such but here he has hunter's instinct which means he can come in from the strategic reserves one turn earlier which means turn one you come off the battlefield edge very very um you know feels pretty pretty bad when they put that much pressure on you but what's really important for stormlands is they can fall back charge and then you know and keep charging you so that throughout the whole game if you're not killing them sorry that they're actually picking taking big chunks off you the entire time uh so he has one two three units of these battle leaders with lethal and then he has a wolf lord on thunder wolf which is essentially their version of captain fear the storm is them throttling their offensive output for some ap which they lack then we have one two three units of assault intercessor blue jump pack one unit of infiltrators followed by one scout one two three bricks of Thunderwolf Cavalry, a Vindicator, which Vindicators are awesome. Everybody knows throughout the whole meta. Two of Armor saves. They can do Armor of Contempt. They can pop smoke. Very hard to shoot. Not that we're shooting them, but that's what's important for them. But really important against us is that if you run up and you tag the Vindicator into the middle table objective to share the Space Wolf OC, we'll say these guys actually have the potential to blow away your boy mom because they can actually shoot blast into combat as their data sheet ability. Therefore, a Vindicator just pressuring going into the mid table saying, Saying, your boys aren't going to kill me because i have a two-up armor save um and i'm t like 11 and i give osay here that means every time your thunderwolf cav unit charges off charges back on they 
you're contributing with the Vindicator to OC to the mid table. So you can see how that ends up being difficult. Then you have one, two, three units of Wolfen. Therefore, the Wolfen are just great trading, 90 points. You know, 10 units are kind of ferocious. These 90 point units mean they're trying to hunt down the flash kits. Uh, they're trying to screen for the mobs of boys so they can't tag the Thunderwolf cavalry. So all in all, that's a very difficult matchup, uh, especially at the world level, right? So Lucas ended up losing that one. Then we go into his next game, which is another loss. And like I said, I think this, this, the Space Wolf Thunderwolves might be one of the hardest, if not the hardest, uh, matchup that you have to bring there. So um, with that being said, we have a thousand suns list uh we have the exalted sorcerers on disc of each infernal master infernal master thousand suns uh, sorcerer and terminator armor so he gives you other data sheet abilities to where he can actually do precision and other weird things it's very fun uh Aroman and the magnus to red we have rubric marines rubric marines rubric marines uh 10 unit of scarab occult terminators thousand of cultists thousand suns cultists thousand suns cultists and then two units of zangors uh i really wonder i didn't get to see this game of course but did lucas troll ended up like getting his character sniped out by this terminators and and they're they're uh because i think it was the demon prince right oh no it's a terminator sorcerer terminator armor sorry sorry that's the demon prince that does that i was tripping i was tripping uh but he ended up losing this game uh so Another difficult matchup here for him, but he ended up doing well. Uh, I think I'm going to take a second real quick and take a look at chat uh, before I do that. So let me take a look at what chat has to say. Uh, he said, he said, wow, for a lot of dudes saying here, uh, per point, flash kits and war bikers are some of the greatest units. Uh, played world leaders into war horde. War horde into world leaders actually works. Yes, it does. Uh, armor saves, low AP, lacking of a bunch of two of damage. This would be hard. Uh, if we could get low stats and points across the table equal to flash kids, we would be okay. You know, that's actually a pretty good, um, you know, thing to notice because it's true. If we if we could get more flash kits are a good example of what you want an orc data sheet to look like. You don't want it to necessarily every single one to look like, hey, I'm throttling with great stats per point killing something. No, you want it to have uh somewhat different durability, volume of offensive output, chance to spike because something like lethal, um, and then them to feel like they're they're you know they're chaff ish where they can die but yeah they, they also have the potential to really kill and participate in the game as a whole so i i'm in, I'm, in, I'm on the same page there is that i think more things should represent the flat how the flash gets are represented too um and right now sadly it's just we're paying we're paying out the wazoo for things that other people just get for just straight up cheap and i think Hopefully GW takes that into consideration when they go on to change us and just get us back to feeling more like good trading horde army as I kind of feel like that's more or less kind of like the, the, the weakness to orcs right now. Like we talked about with the chaos knights and the nids, um, even, you know, even with blood angels where not, not blood angels, never mind, take them back, but chaos knights and nids and such is that we are you know having to deal with armies that they get a monster that has great defensive buffs and can survive our onslaught even on the wall uh and they cost less than us it's like what the heck well sounds, right you know less cp investment less you know a army rule ability because it took our hall wall to be able to deal with them uh and then and then we just we just die so that being said um i do think as you pointed out that they should look a little bit more like us. Uh, let's see what else Chad has to say. And join the stream while I sit here and painting Death Copters. Let's go! They done Death Copters up, boys. Death Copters are cool. Um, of course, they're like one of the only other armies that has, sorry, data sheets that has um, Deep Strike right so you know storm boys and death cop this that's all we can rely on in this world to get our deep strike so that being said lucas stroller is back to this but get your chats in there I'll, I'll be sure to read them i'll get a little more active in chats he gets uh he did lose this eight you know eight point loss here he ended up losing here only eight points he scored for his team not horrible not a horrible loss um but a weird thousand suns list with the terminators unusual very unusual then he comes to his sixth game which this was a one point loss where he went into the thousand suns. Oh, sorry, not thousand suns. It's stupid of me. He went into chaos space marines <laughs> with the pack bound zealots. Now he went into one, two, three, one, two, sorry, two units of chaos lords, followed by Cypher. Cypher with his nice uh, Vex capability. We have a dark commune, followed by another dark commune and another, another dark commune. One, two, Units of cultist mobs followed by a legionnaire, another legionnaire, another legionnaire, another legionnaire. Chaos Rhino. So that's let me count my legionnaires at once. That was annoying. One, two, three, four units of legionnaire followed by two units of cult. Thank you. Uh, two units of rhino. Here comes the juice. Three units of accursed cultist followed by uh, 
big brick of warp towns a annoying beast of nurgle and a nurgling uh beast of nurgle being able to one come back on wounds right so if you don't kill beast of nurgle in a single activation guys in that phase excuse me uh they full back health and then they actually fight pretty good nurglings are just great for what they do warp talents still jumping out and punching you their curse of cultist units putting on their ability to just run up the table hit you really hard withstand your hits as well going into a green tide they're actually uh faster for different turns and more turns and they can hit you very very hard because they can get up to strength six on some of their models uh they have volume of damage two and volume of damage one uh so it's actually kind of crappy that he ended up losing that one you would think he has you know flash gets and such for this but the fact that he also has all these legionnaires and all these cultists that are able to play uh, means that it's just hard for him to get up there as well as cypher to really make the strats cost more if you want to interrupt or something so he ended up losing that one it was a close game as you would imagine as they're almost like a mirror of two different mobs that are trying to pop each other so it seems like it would be a pretty free like freaking fun and awesome game but he did end up losing one by one point that match that made game with the dark communist crazy looking up their rules uh they get great offensive output with stain and lethals and all this weird stuff so yeah um then we go into his final matchup which this was the one on war games live and i was actually in the chat and in there war games live and not to say i told you so to war games live or you gets in the chat but you know <laughs> i'm gonna say i told you so because um just from you know our all understanding and reasoning from things we've seen a lot of the time and of course there are some swings from a little bit of luck here and there and you know saves and everything comes into play but that being said uh we talked about it before yes of course something like give ring can go off and kill a bunch of orc boys and so can howling bowling howling banshees and, and striking scorpions maybe and you look on paper and and uh cabalite warriors and you have this um uh, not the scourges the the witches that may be able to do this all in all all you all it takes is for an eldar unit to not one shot that orc unit and when the orc unit climbs back and interrupts whatever other units came up to touch it all die um even if it's a diminished unit of orcs you're gonna die they're gonna pressure you and hold you in the back of the table and they're going to um just straight up beat the crap out of you with whatever they got left over once you close the distance if that's the thing with eldar they essentially have one chance to one shot the orcs or they have to be fast enough and outmaneuver as kind of like dark eldar Dark can do but because dark eldar can fight us like guerrilla warfare and shoot us with a bunch of last cannons and such they can deal with it uh even more something like green tide because they have a bunch of empty infantry these units these units are just straight up taking our making us take saves um and then we have flash gets to shoot them away and take them away on overwatch which she's seen that in the strike in the matchup on on the stream he didn't end up putting up a 19 point win on this um you know yeah, a lot of the time during War Games Live, they were like, Yeah, striking Scorpion, you know, all our player looks like he's doing great. He's gonna kill these boys. Um, he you know, the flash gets were tanking damage, the boys were tanking a bunch of damage, ton of OC, the boys were living in the mid table. Eldar really didn't want to run up and shoot and punch you. If they did, then they were definitely losing whatever went up there. So all in all, when this matchup and Lucas Stroller and his even you know, even though the team America lost that matchup, um, to get third place or whatever, I think, or first place. So they ended up in fifth. He won this matchup, and I think this was one of the archetypes he really can be with the green tide and with that green tide list that you've seen um as msu you know running around sweet cheeks armies i simply don't want you to touch them and you're going to live in the mid table scoring a bunch of oc playing an out secondary then you have the guns from the flash kits to kill them as they stage up um all in all of course it takes a little bit of luck and high level skill from player positioning like lucas troller shout out to lucas troller for his list let's take one more look at it before we look at the final list of the day where we go into he had two beast bosses, which of course help with something like a walker, right? Uh, we've seen in the war walkers, war walkers have like a plus one, they have like a minus one to wound uh, built into them, right? But war walker doesn't have that many wounds. A beast boss by himself and some flash gets a five man unit of flash gets popping out, popping lethal is picking up that war walker. So these two units of beast bosses, what are they used for? Something like that, for example. Three units of war pain boys, two units of war bosses, uh, sorry, three units of war bosses, of course, for that elite big brick. Then you have the weird boy with the 10 man unit left over to play the secret mission potential two trucks two 10 man unit flash kits a five man unit of flash kits one unit of grot and then two units of storm boys so shout out to stroller for taking the green tide being old faithful to the orcs uh, as a lot of different other orc players you know even though they say they love the orcs just gave up on us and went and played blood angels uh when played dark angels went and played a bunch of different very elite and highly respectable yet more reliable outcome armies so a shout out to lucas troller and team america for still taking the orcs 
to the WTC, giving us some love and attention, giving the green tide and the great water, give you a chance to represent America. And even though, you know, Lucas didn't end up losing the Grable Dick games, it looks like he had some, you know, very respectable matches and he had some very, very tough factions that he had to go up against. If you enjoyed the clip, check out the full video here. If you'd like to see more tactics, click here. Let's get stuck in, lads!